Hi guys, before I make the video today, I just want to apologize for the fan noise that you'll probably be hearing in the background. I'm living in an apartment for school, and this place does not have air conditioning. And for most of the year, that isn't a problem, because I live in Pennsylvania, and it doesn't get too hot here outside of the summer. But the first couple months of the school year, and even the last month or so of the school year, it gets pretty hot in here. So. Unless you want me to be sweating up a storm the entire video, I really do need the fans running, so sorry about the background noise, I'll try to filter some of it out with some audacity tricks, uh, but just bear with me here and deal with it. Enjoy the video. Alright guys, so in today's video we are going to be taking an extensive look at the Lenovo ThinkPad X240. We are going to be making a ton of upgrades to this X240. I bought this off of eBay for $125, including shipping, and it was listed as is broken for parts because the right click on the touchpad doesn't work. And well, I figured I'm going to be replacing this with the next 250 touchpad anyway, so what the hell, we'll go for it. And it actually has decent specs. It's coming with a 120GB Samsung SSD and 8GB of RAM, which on the X240 is the maximum amount of RAM that it supports. Other than that, it's basically a base configuration though. We have the 1366x768 TN panel, so it's not even IPS, it's a TN panel. Uh, we don't have a back of the keyboard, we don't have a fingerprint reader, and we don't even have the internal battery, which was one of the big selling points of these newer ThinkPads, is that in addition to having the removable external battery, they also have an internal battery, which allows you to hot swap batteries without turning down the computer. So when the external battery dies, you can replace it with another one without even turning the computer off, because it can run off the internal battery. Uh, so this uh, configuration is so low end that it doesn't even have that. So what we're going to be doing is replacing the entire top case that includes the palm rest, the keyboard, and the touchpad. Um, because I was going to replace the palm rest anyway with one that has a fingerprint reader, and we're going to be replacing the touchpad with an X250 touchpad so we have the physical track point buttons back, and I will also be replacing the keyboard with the backlit keyboard. We will also be upgrading the display in this to a 1080p IPS panel, and we will also be adding an internal battery to supplement the external battery. Between these two, I'm sure we will get amazing battery life out of this thing. Now, the RAM is already maxed out, so I can't really upgrade that, and I will leave the 120GB SSD in there for now, because that should be plenty for what I would use this for. If I end up selling it, or if I decide I need more, then I'll probably add more. And there is the M.2 slot in here for us to add an SSD, while also keeping a hard drive in here if we want to. Uh, so without further ado, we will get started with this process. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do, as with any time you're working on a laptop, is to make sure to shut down Windows or whatever operating system you're using, and then remove the power adapter and battery. In the case of a ThinkPad that has the internal battery, you want to go into the BIOS and disable the internal battery before starting to take the machine apart. This is especially important since we're going to be replacing the screen. If there's any sort of power connected to this ThinkPad when we replace the screen, it will blow the backlight fuse and render the screen and laptop pretty much useless, unless you're fine with using an external display. After this, we have to remove the screws on the bottom cover, and then we have something new for the ThinkPads compared to old ThinkPads. We have to pry the bottom cover off because there's a bunch of annoying clips in place. As you can see, I'm using an old debit card to take care of things. You can also use a guitar pick, your fingernails, or if you want to risk damaging your laptop, you can actually use a metal screwdriver. After some work and patience, it does come off, and now you can see pretty much all the internals of the laptop. So the first thing we're moving is this little stand-in for the battery, because like I said, there's no battery installed here, so there's just a little stand-in to fill the gap. And then we're going to remove the hard drive, or in this case, the SSD. The caddy's just held in by one screw, and then the entire thing comes out. After this, you just disconnect the hard drive from the little cable that connects to the motherboard. We won't even need to remove this cable from the motherboard, as it will just come out with the rest of the motherboard. 
After this, there are a bunch of little ribbon cables here towards the center of the board. These connect to the keyboard, touchpad, fingerprint reader, all that good stuff. So we're going to disconnect those. One of them you simply lift up and pull off. The other two, there's a little tab you have to lift up before you can remove the ribbon cable. We've fast-forwarded a little bit in the disassembly, but there are two speakers you're going to have to remove screws for, and then you can remove the screws for the heatsink. There are four screws, and once you have removed them, you can disconnect the little ribbon cable that connects to the fan, and then you can lift up and remove the cooling assembly. We will also be putting new thermal paste on the processor later as the thermal paste here is completely dried up and really wasn't even covering the entire CPU die. Plus it's really cheap crappy thermal paste so we will be replacing it with some better Arctic MX4 paste. Now we are removing the display cable and the power jack cable from the motherboard. There are some other cables we're going to remove, and then you can pretty much just remove a few screws and take out the motherboard. We fast forwarded a bit here as there is a little daughter board underneath this metal bracket that is connected to the power button, and we need to remove that as our new palm rest does not come with a power button. So you can see I kind of damaged the metal that was holding the board in place, but since it's the old palm rest, I don't really care anyway. After this, and removing three screws from each of the screen's hinges, you can remove the entire display assembly. Just a note, you don't have to remove the display assembly to replace the screen. It can all be done without, repla without removing the assembly, but it does make it a little bit easier, especially for first-timers. Like older ThinkPads, the bezel comes off with just removing a few snaps. You can try to use a credit card, but I found it easier to just use my hands. Unlike older ThinkPads, the screen is not held in by any screws, so you can just pretty much lift it up and then flip it over as if you were closing a laptop to reveal the ribbon cable. It's held in by some tape, so simply peel up the tape and remove the connector. Then you can attach the connector to your new screen when it is lined up properly. Make sure it's lined up properly so you don't damage the screen or the ribbon cable. Once it's secured, you can reapply the tape that was holding it down. So this was the point when I realized that the vendor who sold me the laptop screen actually sent me the wrong display. They sent me a display designed for the X260, which is a little bit smaller and doesn't have as much of a border as the X240's display. Because of this, it was moving around freely, as you can see here. Now, I got in contact with the seller and explained the situation, and he overnight shipped me a replacement screen, which was the correct display. And once I got it and made sure it worked, I packed up the old display and shipped it back to him. Putting the bezel back on is pretty easy. You just have to snap all the snaps back in place. The bottom is a little bit more difficult because there's some more snaps that you have to worry about, and then you have to make sure none of the cables are in the way. We're going to put that off to the side for a little bit as we put the motherboard in to the new palm rest assembly. As you can see, it has the dedicated track point buttons and the backlit keyboard and fingerprint reader. So... Now we are screwing in the display assembly to the new uh, palm rest assembly. Now we've put the motherboard back on and we're applying some new thermal paste to the CPU. I actually put a little bit too much on here, but I think a little too much is better than a little too little. Then it's just a matter of putting the heatsink back in place and screwing it down and then reinserting the fan cable. Next, we're going to reinsert the ribbon cables that go to the touchpad and keyboard. These also carry the information for the fingerprint reader, so you won't have to worry about another ribbon cable for that. Now we are putting in the battery. So this is held in by three screws. They usually won't come with the battery, and if your ThinkPad didn't come with the internal battery, you might have to source a few screws from somewhere else. It's just a simple matter of putting in the battery and lining it up, and then guiding the cable to the motherboard through the correct channel and plugging it in, which really is not that difficult. Then you just have to screw in the three screws that secure the battery in place.
Before we put the bottom cover back on, since it is a huge pain in the butt to take off, we are going to make sure the laptop is working. So I'm going to plug in the power connector here and then press the power button. The lights of the keyboard are a good sign, and the ThinkPad logo is also a good sign. I'm just going to shut down the computer now and then reapply the bottom cover. So this is the completed project with the backlit keyboard and the 1080p IPS display. All in all, it is a huge upgrade over the original X240, and it's also a huge plus to have the X250 track point buttons, which really makes this a lot more usable. I mean, even once you've adjusted to the X240's touchpad, it's really difficult to use. It's just a horrible design. And there you can see it is indeed a 1080p display, and it looks absolutely fantastic. My only complaint, really, with the display is that it does have a little bit of backlight bleed along the bottom, and this was something I also noticed with my X230. It's not too noticeable, and unless you have dark images on the screen, you really can't notice it at all, and you really can't do much about it because it's just the nature of these displays. When looking for a display for the X240, you have a bunch that you can choose from. But if you're looking for a good 1080p IPS display, I recommend the LG LP125WF2. Uh, this is one of the highest quality 1080p displays you can get for the X240, and is immune to some of the issues that other 1080p screens for this machine had. Also, make sure that the seller is sending you the correct display, so that you don't have an experience like I had, and you don't want to deal with that. So, try to get it right the first time around. Make sure you get the correct display the first time, so you don't have to go through the trouble that I did. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thanks for watching, and be sure to stay tuned for more videos.